Today we are going to take a look at the strain gauge and how they work, how to properly read their output and use them in everyday projects. As its name implies, these devices are used to measure strain or deformation over an object. If we know the gauge factor of this device, just by measuring the strain, we can easily pass the deformation measure to force measure over that object. Then the measured force will be translated into weight. So basically using a strain gauge, we can go and measure weight. This can be very useful with our projects that require precision weight measurements. We can build a scale for example, a feeder device by weight, detect when somebody plays something over a surface and much more. So in today's video you will understand how a common strain gauge works. Then we will see how to pass from resistance values to voltage values and read that with an ADC and then measure the deformation and finally how to measure weight and create a basic scale. So make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell. And if you want to support these kind of videos, check my Patreon page. So let's get started. Video sponsored by GLC PCB. I guess that you've heard they now have a low cost and fast SMT service. So get your PCBs assembled in 24 hours with their in stock more than 30,000 SMT components. In this way you can get the PCB with all the components already soldered in place, ready to use. So read more about the service on their SMT page. The finish on the solder points is very good. Production time is quite quick and prices starting from only $7. What's up my friends, welcome back. So here we have some so-called load cells. As you can see, one is marked with 1 kg and the other one is up to 20 kg. These other four here that have a different shape, these are rated up to 50 kg. As you can already see, we have some sort of white protective glue over the load cell and four different wires of different colors are coming out. We will later see what is below this white protective glue. But first, these load cells are made out of aluminum blocks. And as you can see, in the middle, the material is thinner, so that will be the point that will suffer deformation. Now imagine that the cell is holding place on the right side, and the force is applied on the left side, so that would bend this load cell, so a small deformation will be created both on the top side and on the bottom side of the load cell. The difference is that the top part will suffer tension and the bottom part will suffer compression. That's pretty obvious since the aluminum bar is bending downwards on the left side. If we are able to measure this deformation, we could later measure the force that was applied to the aluminum block. And that's exactly what we will do. So below this white protective glue, we have something like this. A very thin elastic component. This is called a strain gauge. If we take a closer look at this component, we can see two connection pads and then we have a conductive wire pattern with repetitive deflections. This conductive wire has a defined resistance. As you can see, if I measure the resistance between the pads, we get around 350 ohms for this specific strain gauge. Other gauges could be different. But now when I bend it, the value will change. So the interesting thing about this component is that it will change its resistance over strain. And this is how. Now imagine that the gauge is placed and fixed in place over that aluminum bar before. And then we go and bend the bar. The gauge will bend at the same time. That will stretch or compress the conductive pattern that it has on it. Now imagine this pattern is made out of copper for example. Let's put the string gauge apart and see an example just with a copper wire. This wire will have a certain area and a longitude. So these two units will give the resistance of the wire. The resistance of a wire is opposite to the flow of current. Now it's obvious that if the area of this wire is getting smaller, less electrons could pass, so meaning lower current. So that will increase the resistance between the ends of the wire. So in a few words, increasing the area will lower the resistance and lowering the area will increase the resistance of a conductor. Over force, when bending, this wire will stretch, so the area automatically will get smaller, so at the same time the resistance higher. Ok, but now this resistance variation is very very low. 
but instead of having just one wire, we place a few of these wires in the same area, just as we have on the strain gauge. So we stretch the gauge and the resistance will increase. We compress it and the resistance will get lower. Quite easy, right? Now measure directly resistance is not always practical. For example, a microcontroller such as the Arduino can measure resistance by its own. But it can measure voltage. So in some way, we need to pass the gauge output from resistance values to voltage values. So please see my past theory video about the Wisdom Bridge in order to see this with more details. But anyway, we place the strain gauge in a Wisdom Bridge and apply voltage. If the bridge is balanced, the voltage in the middle of the point A and B should be zero. When the strain gauge will change its resistance, it will unbalance the bridge, and the voltage between A and B will also change. So that's how we pass from resistance variations to voltage values. But there is even more. This voltage change is still very low, and for that we need this board. This is a 24 bits ADC. In this way we could measure very small voltage changes. Ok, so I have to connect the load cell to this ADC board. This is using the HX711 ADC, and the schematic of this board is something like this. We have the load cell with two strain gauges in a Wheatstone bridge. Then the voltage output is read by the ADC, which will send the data to the Arduino. So I connect the ADC board to the microcontroller. See the full schematic for all the tests below this video. And by the way, you will also need to install the HX711 library, so go below, download it and install it to the Arduino IDE. I run a very simple code, that will print the raw values from the analog to digital converter. Remember that this is a 24 bits ADC, so it will give values from 0 to 2 exponential 24. I print the values on the serial monitor, and as you can see, when I apply force on the load cell, the ADC value will change. But this value doesn't give me force or weight information yet. For that we need to apply the correct ratio. So now go and download the second code, and read each line in order to understand more. This one will give the results in grams units and print that to the LCD screen. This code will also make a calibration first. So remember to connect the LCD as well to the Arduino, or just use the serial monitor as before. Ok, as you can see the load cell has some screw threads, so we could screw this in place on a surface and create our scale. I will use this transparent acrylic part for the top side of my scale. For that I first remove the protective tape from the acrylic. Then I will use some wood for the base of my scale that is a little bit bigger. So I screen place the load cell on the wood base. But you must leave some space from the ground to the cell so it will be able to flex. So I place two screw nuts in between the load cell and the base. Now I add the acrylic part onto the other side of the load cell. I connect an LCD this time so we can see the calibration process as well and I glue the Arduino and the LCD in place and the scale is ready. Ok, now in order to calibrate the scale, you will need a known value weight that is in the range of the load cell. In my case a weight that is below 1 kg, because that is the value that I have for my cell. You could use some standard weights or just use a commercial scale first to measure let's say 200 grams of something. So here I have a metal motor of 283 grams. And I know that because I've measured this with my commercial scale. Now I place this value here in the code, and depending on this value, we will later calibrate the scale. So I upload the new code with a 283 value. Power up the Arduino without any weight on the scale, and on the LCD you will be asked to place the known value weight. I place the weight and in a few moments, the scale is calibrated. Now I can measure any value that I want. So I measure some test weights with my commercial scale and the first one is 200 grams. The second weight is 300 grams and the last one is 400 grams. With this I can make all sort of combination and test my scale. I measure the 200 grams one and I get pretty much the same exact value. I do the same for the 300 grams and also for the 400 grams and in both cases I get good results so the scale is well calibrated. Just 1 or 2 grams less, and that is a very small error, and that could be lowered by making more measure loops in the code. 
Ok, so I've changed a little bit the code and add an extra button. This button will trigger an interruption. And that will activate the Tara loop. That will place the scale to zero. This will be useful when you want to measure the weight of a product that is inside of the container. So you place the container on the scale. Then you push the Tara button. So now the scale is set to zero once again. And now you add the product and the scale will only show the weight of the product. Pretty nice, right? You will see that if you remove the product and the container, you will get negative values. And by the way, with this setup, you could also measure negative force, meaning that the force is pushing upwards. Ok, so then I've placed another button to change the modes from grams to milliliters and also to ounces. You could add any other unit of conversion in the code, just by multiplying the grams by the correspondent value. So that is how you can use this load cell to create a scale and measure weight. By using different precision load cells, you can get different precision measurements. Of course, if I just want to measure grams for example, I won't use the 20 kg load cell. The 1 kg will be a better choice. Ok, so body weight scales are working on the same principle. If you flip any body weight scale, you will see that it has 4 feet. Each one will have some sort of this load cell, like these 4 ones here. We could also connect these ones like this to the 24 bit ADC and once again measure weight as any other scale. In this case, we will have a wisdom bridge of 4 strain gauges. For these load cells, as you can see, the strain gauge is placed here below the force pivot point. When force is made on this point, the portion here of the load cell will deform. By measuring all 4 cells, we can create a pretty decent scale. All we have to do is to mount these load cells on each of the 4 corners of a solid plate. Then download from below the example code and read the details line by line. And in case you want to create your own unique load cell, well you have to glue the strain gauges directly on the solid surface and make sure it will deform at the same time with the material. Not any kind of glue is good for this job. A recommended suitable adhesive is the cyano acrylate. I've tried some nail polish and didn't have good results, because the polish is not elastic enough and after a few bands it will crack. If you want to get good results, use a proper glue and stick the gauge onto a piece of glass for example, and then you could use that for your scale. Once you know how this works, you could use this in your projects, in all sorts of forms. You could measure the bending of tubes, detect objects, measure weight as in this video and much more. You have all that you need below on electronoops.com. The schematics, the codes that I've used today and the parts that you need to buy. I hope this video will help you with your projects and that you have learned something new. If so, give a like to this video. Also consider subscribing and if you want to support this kind of videos, check my Patreon page. So thanks again and see you later guys.